and welcome to another episode of Ubar. In today's episode, I'm going to answer some of the questions you ask me about layers. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday, so let's get started. <laughs> So as I say, this is a Q&A video that I thought that it's needed because I made a video about layers and introduction to layers some time ago. I'll leave the link in the card and in the description box. And there you ask me many, many questions also on Twitter and on email and, and all the different networks that I have around. And you ask me some questions and they repeat many times. So I grab the three most popular questions and I'm going to make a video out of them. So the first question you ask me is how to use a layer that has been created in another project, in my account, but in another project and use it in my serverless project. So I will show you how to do that. And also I will show you how to use external layers as well because they are kind of together. The second question is how to update the version of my layer. Can I do it automatically? And the third question is about uh, local testing and locally invoking functions that are using layers. So we are going to go to the code and I will answer each of the questions. So let's start by answering the first question that you ask. How you can use a layer that is deployed in another project or an external layer? So let's go to our console and create two projects. One for the layer and one for the project. So I will make one directory that is called the name of the layer. I will call it layer moment because I'm going to use the moment library to make the tests. Then I get inside and I create a new serverless framework project where I will be just having that layer. I open it in Visual Studio Code and then I go and create another project that I will call the basic layer project that it will be using this layer. So then I create another serverless framework project and I open it again with Visual Studio Code. So now I will clean very fast all the comments below, all the comments in the serverless framework. I will speed this up because you already know the drill. If you don't know what I'm talking about or doing, go and check my playlist serverless 101. Now when this is ready, we can go back to our layer moment project and there we can remove the function because we are not having any function in this project. We remove also the handler.js and we already leave the serverless YAML. And now we will define a new property called layers and there we will put the moment layer, the definition of this layer and a path to it. It will be in the folder moment layer and you put a description moment dependencies so now we need to create this folder called moment layer so we create that and in there we can then install the node modules we do npm install moment such save and that will install the node modules and also create the package log json now with this in place we can go and deploy this project into the cloud. SLS deploy and this will deploy the layer onto the cloud. While this is deploying, we can go to our other project and use this layer. So the first thing we want to do is to modify a little bit the handler. So we are going to use the layer and I will call the library moment. And then we can make use of this library by just getting the day of today. And we can return that date in the message that we return in our response. So we can see that it's working. Now we go to our serverless YAML into the function. And there we need to find some things. As we did in the layers video, we need to find the node uh, path where the node modules will be. So there we will create an environmental variable called node path. And then we are going to pass the optp that is where the layers will put all the temporary uh, values. So if we have multiple layers, they will be all there. 
and then as we are just deploying to the known modules we are going to put it there and then we need to define the layers that we are going to use so for that we are going to get the ARN from our previously deployed layer so we can copy what the serverless framework return us when after deployed. One thing I'm missing here is a way to call this lambda. So I just create an HTTP event with the method get and the path hello. So I just deploy everything and then I can get the avoid. So we can test it out and see if this works. So let's speed this up and let's get back for testing. Great, now our service is deployed, we got the URL, we can put it in the browser and we get a date back, the date of the day. And that's how you use a layer that you create in a different project. If you want to use an external layer that you have not created, that is being created by someone else and is hosted in someone else's account, uh, you can get some inspiration from this uh, GitHub repo called Awesome Layers and it has a list of different types of layers, runtimes, utilities, security package and monitoring packages and if you click in the different libraries you will find some documentation on how to use it and also you can see if it's for python for node what is a compatible runtime and you can see the arn for the layer so you can use it right away in your code to answer the second question is about how you can update the layer versions I imagine that when you ask these questions, you want to have an automatic way to update your layer version. And I will tell you that there is not. Whenever you update the layer and it increments the version, then you will need to go to the projects that are using that layer and increment the version there manually. You could create an environmental variable of that uh, version number and do it from outside, but these layers are defined in the infrastructure in the serverless YAML. So in order to apply the change, you still need to deploy the function. To update a version, you cannot do it manually, you need to deploy the function again. I don't think doing it automatically will be a good idea because if your dependencies get updated and you don't have control of it, then your code can start failing without you knowing. So I think it's good that you get the opportunity to try this and if, make sure that everything works before doing the update and you have the decision when to do it. Third question is about local testing of functions that use layers. So let's go back to our project and we can run the local invocation of our function with the layers and we can see that we get an error back. So if we type sls invoke local and the name of the function then we will be running this lambda in our local machine. And there we get an error and that error is because we are using a library that is not defined in our project. If we run this in the cloud, SLS invoke the name of the function, then it works. So in order to make this work, you need to do two things. The first thing is to install the dependency. So we can see what is in our package file before of anything. So then we can see what is going to be deployed. So if we uh, the SLS package and we extract what is in the package then we can see that for now we are only sending to the cloud the handler JS of this because it's a very simple project. Our Lambda only has a handler JS. So now we can install the library and we will install it in our development dependencies. So we do npm install moment that's just save dev and this will install it in our development dependencies so that's good. The Lambda will not break when we are running this from outside. So now if you run this locally, we invoke this Lambda locally, it works. Good. Now let's package the project and see what is inside the deployment package that we are going to send to Lambda. We can see there that known modules are there and we don't want that because we want to keep the deployment package small and we have the layer already. So the next thing we need to do is to exclude the package uh, moment from the packaging. So to that, we do the serverless YAML, we write package, exclude, and then the folders we want to exclude in this case is the moment uh, folder inside the known modules. I don't put the whole known modules because we might have 
other things in that folder that we just want to exclude the library. So now if we package again, after uh, putting that in our serverless YAML, we can see that the package only has the handler and the package lock. If we deploy, we can speed this up and see that everything still works by going to the browser with the URL that we get. That was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And as you can see, I'm reading your comments. Sometimes I might not reply to them in the comments, but I'm always reading them. So please leave comments. I always put things that are new in my backlog. And if there is a lot of recurring questions, I try and come to answer them. So go ahead and comment and put your opinions and what you want to see in this channel in the comment box or in Twitter or send me a message. There is a million ways to contact me. So around here, as always, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch. So go ahead and click. And if not, I see you in the next episode of Uber. Ciao, ciao.